Well, I'm here at BVE 2019, and we're doing something slightly different this year with the guys from Ross. And of course, the guy from Ross that we like to speak to, of course, is Stuart Russell. Hi, Stuart. Hey, you're too kind. <laughs> oh, mate, I love it. Um, we're going to have a little chat about Ross. Sure. And for a start, Ross is a bit of an endangered species, really. This is a family-owned company. Yeah, I, I would probably say we're maybe not so much an endangered species, but we're an increasingly <laughs> rare breed, I think, in yeah. the industry. Um, and I think that there, are, there are certain benefits that we get from that situation. Um, I was having a conversation with somebody the other day about um, about the relationship that we tend to have with our customers as a business. And I've noticed over the last couple of years especially, uh, customers are, are really looking for a different kind of relationship with vendors now. It's, it's much more of a partnership approach. It's much more based, I think, on a, or, or based on a more deeper understanding of the, the problems and pain points that customers have. Um, and we are, are quite uniquely placed, I think, to, to have that quality of relationship with our customers by virtue of the fact that we are, we are as you say, a, a family owned, a privately owned business and one of the, the, the few that is left in the industry. Yeah. Um, I, I said this morning to somebody that, that David Ross put a, a post on LinkedIn recently and he was talking about the fact that Ross has only ever had two CEOs in the company's history. And really I think the point that he was trying to make with that is to say that we're in this for the long game. Yeah. Um, so many companies, because they are companies and not charities, obviously, so many companies here are still driven by quarter-to-quarter -quarter thinking. Yeah. Um, and, and we have that great advantage, I think, of being able to look much further down the road um, and to really plan the kind of products that we're going to make yep. um, and, and develop those kinds of relationships that we have with our customers um, on, on the basis of that, that longer-term view. So, um, I think rare, hopefully, rather than endangered, but uh, but we do. I think we we do kind of stand out a little yep. bit in, in the industry for that, um, and I think for the better. Brilliant. Now we tend to meet up every year at BVE. Um, how was 2018 for you? I mean, generally speaking, we, we were in an incredibly fortunate situation last year. I yep. mean, it was a it really was a, a fantastic year for us, and we're. Um, Certainly not taking that for granted, but we yep. did have a you know we did have a fantastic year last year um, in EMEA specifically, so Europe, Middle East, Africa. Obviously, the company grew by about 27%. Yep. Uh, we grew very healthily overall uh, globally, and that means that we've now had 27 years consecutive right. years of growth, um, and on average, it's been about 17% every yep. year. So. Um, again, it, we're starting from different baselines in different parts of the world, and I always make the point that outside of North America, we're maybe not as well known as, as we would like to be. Yeah. Um, but I think we're, we're trying to go out to the market with some very positive messages. I think people are picking up on that. Uh, I think they are, they're liking what we're saying. Um, we managed to win some important business last year around the world with some, uh, some very well-known customer names. Um, and I think when we do, uh, when we do take on new customers at Ross, we don't tend to lose many. I think we do a very good job of hanging on to customers yep. as we, um, you know, as we go along with them, uh, and that's a testament, I think, to the quality of yep. tech support, and customer service that, that we give customers. So, so last year was fantastic. We're already into Q2 of our, our 2019. Um, it's looking pretty healthy so far. Right. Um, so, you know, like I say, we don't take it for granted, but um, people seem to like what they're hearing from us. Yep. And it, that's being reflected in the in the numbers that we're doing. Brilliant. Um, you guys have been around for a while. You get involved in lots of different areas of this industry. What sort of trends have you noticed recently in this industry? It's a good question. Um, I think one of the things, I mean, I've been with the company for, for about five and a half years now. Yep. One of the things I've noticed over the last couple of years is the, the pace of IP adoption certainly has been speeding up. Um, but generally, IP hasn't really hit the market, I don't yep. think, in the, um, in the way that a lot of commentators suggested it would. And I'm talking globally here. Yep. I mean, I understand that uh, certainly in North America and some parts of Europe, um, you know, there, there has been a move towards IP. Uh, and some large broadcasters have even yep. been mandated to, yep. to, to make that shift. Um, but in a lot of the rest of the world, 
Um, IP adoption is 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 not quite as uh, it's not quite as far along. Um, and actually, although IP adoption has been increasing, as I said, the rate of adoption of other complementary technologies like 12 gig SDI, yep. for example, that's been increasing even faster. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think we're seeing maybe a little bit of a healthy outbreak of pragmatism. I think yep. as, as as customers really begin to get a good understanding of what a move to IP involves. Yes. And they maybe think, well, hang on a minute, are we quite ready for that yet? In terms of the the changes in infrastructure that are required in terms of the, um, the, the tolerance for risk that we have yep. to have and the, the, you know, the organizational culture. Um, is that really going to be the right thing for us? So I think some companies that, that went very heavily into IP are maybe now reining back a yep. little bit. Um, I think we were, as a business, we were uh, very early champions of, yep. of 12 gig SDI as a technology and I think that has borne fruit for us and I yeah. think a lot of people have, have shown interest in that because it is a very cost effective upgrade path that still gives you access to, to a lot of efficiencies. Um, so definitely you know, IP is still a talking point. We saw a lot of 12 gig SDI products being launched last year at IBC. Yeah. I would expect to go into NEB and, and see even more right. um, because that, you know, as I say, it's a, it's a very pragmatic uh, platform and that offers a lot of benefits. So I would expect to see a lot more of that at NEB. Um, in terms of other technologies, I mean, obviously the ongoing discussion around UHD, yep. uh, HDR. Um, somebody was asking me the other day about 8K, you know, yep. how, how far away I think that is. Um, you know, we're not being Luddite about it, but I'm not entirely sure that the, the customer appetite for 8K is, yeah. is quite there sure. yet. And um, it might be, uh, an even longer term proposition than some of the commentators are talking about now. But um, but that's the thing about this industry, you know, there's always something new coming yep. along on the horizon, yep. there are always uh, new technologies and, and I'm getting asked a lot of questions these days about AI and yep. where that might figure in some of our products. Yep. So you know there's always always a whole bunch of people out there with, with at least one eye on the on the future. Absolutely. So looking forward then, if you had to pick one, what would you say your theme was for 2019? Ooh. Um, well, we started talking uh, this year about high impact, high efficiency production. Yep. Um, and, and we've had a number of conversations with customers recently where the themes of, of value and efficiency, I think, have, yep. have bubbled up to the surface very quickly in those conversations. So uh, this is something that, that some of our senior management team came up with towards the end of last year. And I like the idea of being able to go out to the market with a very simple message. Yep. It doesn't matter your size, doesn't matter your scale, doesn't matter what kind of content you're, you're producing. Ross can help you to deliver yep. the high impact, high efficiency productions yep. that, that, that you want to. Because value is important. We're all having to do more with less in this industry. We're all seeking to get as much efficiencies as we can. Uh, yep be it more efficient workflows, more efficient ways of working, things like automation. Um, you know, these, are, these are important trends. So I think being able to kind of focus on, on that, on how we can really improve efficiencies and, and save money along the way yep. and, and, and help people keep their blood pressure down at a sensible <laughs> level. Um, and improving that impact, improving the creativity, yep. making the content more engaging without necessarily having to, to spend more on it. And just one final thought on that, if I may. Um, one of our customers actually said something quite compelling, I thought, right. uh, recently. They said that they wanted to get more live content back into their schedule. Right. Because live, he said, is the, the fun and the exciting yep. and, and the sexy end of yep. the market. And, and our corporate tagline on the wall behind me is, is living live. Yeah. Because you know, we, we have a, a, a very strong passion for live production. But the concern that customer had was the cost because yep. live tends to be more costly and can obviously be unpredictable as yep. well. Um, and he said you know, one of the reasons why he has enjoyed working with us so much as a business is that we have enabled him to get more of that li live content into the schedule, but very cost effectively. Yep. So he's being more creative, but he's not having to spend more money. And the overall content, I think the end result is, is better to look at. Brilliant. Well, we are here at BVE and there is an awful lot of kits around here, new stuff. You guys have a massive portfolio. <laughs> uh, 
anything new and exciting we can look oh, forward to from you guys where, coming? Where, where to begin? I, I always, I always have to take a very deep breath before we before we get to NEB because yep. I think last year the the senior management team were, were trying to kill me because we, we went into NEB with I think 16 new oh, products yeah. and then it was about 11 or 12 for IBC. But we're trying to kind of stretch things out a little bit. Yep. Um, and, and, and balance the new product introductions. Yep. Um, and we launched a very important product last year at CabSat. Yep. Um, and I think we may well have a couple of interesting, uh, interesting things to unveil in, in Dubai this year. Um, but th the only thing I can say for certain is that there, there will be a lot of stuff from right. us because there always is. Yep. Um, a lot of that will be brand new, not just enhancements. Yep. I have a, a little bit of a working list in, in my head, um, which I, I won't share with you now. Sure. but. But I mean, we were we were 28, 29 products yep. over the course of ne of last year. I don't see any reason why it's going to be less right. this year. So I'm going What's to have to, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to keep taking the uh, keep taking the throat sweeps. Yep. I think. Brilliant. Well, Stuart, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Obviously, you, you are walking around here and represented here all over the place in BVE, uh, so people can come and see you. If they weren't able to come and see you here and they want to find out more about Gloss and your entire product range and services range. Is there a website? Can there is, to? yes. No, we're, we're here all week, as you say. We're, we're, we have Ross Kit all over the yeah. uh, all over the show floor. But if anyone's not able to, to make the journey to see us, everything that you need to see is on rossvideo.com. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Thanks Stuart. Thanks a lot. Well, there you have it. Mr. Stuart Russell has updated us at the beginning of 2019. Can't wait to see what is happening from Ross. If you want to find out more, go and check out their website. And don't forget to look at everything that we've been doing this year at uh, BV 2019. You'll find that on our website, of course, and that is kitplus.com. Thank you very much.